talk is about a zooming presentation tool called SOSI. And this talk is also a live demo of what you can do with SOSI. Um, to put a little background information, well, when I started working as a teacher and researcher 10 years ago, I did a lot of slideshows like everybody else. And my slideshow software usually proposed this layout for slides. So this is what I did. I clicked to add a title. I clicked to add, to add text. And most of my presentations looked like this. So they were full of bullet points, lists, a lot of text to read. And I thought that it was very convenient because if I forgot to say something, well, my audience could still read everything on the, on the slide. But at second thought, I realized that it was not really my way to present things. Uh, usually, well, when I try to listen to someone, I cannot concentrate on what is written at the same time. And when I try to, to read, well, it's difficult if someone is speaking at the same time. So I tried to change my presentation style to better separate the audio and the visual channel so that in the end, most of my presentations were like this. Most slides were made of drawings, pictures, charts, and less and less text, so that most of the text was, in fact, given in the speech. Actually, I felt better about it, but um, it was still frustrating, because most of the time, I had to show complex diagrams big pictures that did not fit on a single slide, and my slideshow software missed an essential feature, which, which was to zoom on the regions of interest that I wanted to show at a given time. At that time, a few years ago, a colleague of mine told me about a tool that did exactly this, that does exactly this. The tool is called Prezi. It's a proprietary software. Uh, and it does exactly what I want, but it has a license that does not really fit with my needs. Um, to sum up, uh, it is proprietary software with a closed document format. Uh, everything is done in the, in the cloud, uh, so it is not even possible to get a local copy of my document data on my own computer. Uh, so I started to think about a possible alternative to Prezi that would use free software and open standards. And I called this tool SOSI. Okay, if you speak French, you know that a, a SOSI is a look-alike, something, someone that looks uh, very much like you. Um, SOSI is not actually a clone of Prezi. It's a different software with different features a different philosophy and a different workflow. Uh, it gives similar effects, as you can see from this presentation, but it is not the same tool at all. First of all, when I started developing SOSI, I sh chose um, a base document format, and I chose SVG, because uh, most of my presentations are drawing intensive, they contain a lot of diagrams, and it was very convenient to have a drawing, a, a vector drawing format for this. And it's very convenient for authors because there already exists uh, several um, drawing software that support SVG, either natively or as an export format. You can see uh, some of them here, some are free, some are non-free. On the other hand, today almost everybody has an SVG viewer on their computer in the form of a web browser. And support for SB SVG has improved a lot over, over the last few years. I was told that even uh, Internet Explorer now can display SOSI presentations quite correctly. And finally, adding JavaScript to SVG allows to make dynamic documents that you can play like this. 
So here is the basic workflow of uh, how to create a presentation using SOZI. First of all, you will use your favorite vector drawing software, such as Inkscape, and you will draw several elements, the visual content of your presentation, as if you were creating a big poster with everything on a single page. Then you can add presentation information. First of all, you can delimit your frames using rectangles, for, in, for instance. And you can open the SOZI editor, which is now implemented as, a, as an Inkscape extension. So you can see here the, the main window of SOZI, which is an, um, an independent window uh, from Inkscape. And from this window, you will edit uh, every information of your presentation. You will give uh, frames titles. You will program delays. You will tell whether you want the rectangles to be uh, hidden or visible. And this extension will add information to your SVG document in the form of custom XML elements. And it will add a script element that contains the JavaScript SOZI player. When you save your document, you get a standalone presentation that you can distribute, that you can play immediately. You can open it in your web browser, and it will play immediately without the need for a plugin or an additional software. SOZI has been around for a few years. I chose a numbering system that uses the the year and the month, so we are today uh, the latest um, um, stable version is called SOZI 13 and uh, it is based on the following software, it uses Inkscape and its extension system and the extension itself is written in Python and uses uh, GTK2 through PyGTK. This editor has a lot of problems today. It uh, works well for most uh, use cases, but we can say that this user interface is not really suitable for a presentation editor. We would expect something more direct. Here, it is a form-based uh, user interface uh, with lists, with fields, and the extension system of Inkscape makes, makes it very uh, inefficient and quite boring to use. Moreover, it is based on technologies that are considered today uh, out of date. GTK2 and PyGTK. Uh, PyGTK is not maintained anymore, so it is uh, problematic to use it now. And especially, it is difficult to install on other um, operating systems than Linux. Uh, Windows and OS X users usually uh, have problems installing SOZI, SOZI on their computers. So. What will SOZI 14 look like? I have chosen to um, give up maintaining the Inkscape extension and I want to switch to a new uh, editor based on web technologies, uh, namely HTML5 and JavaScript and SVG. It will provide a better user interface that would look like this with direct manipulation of the document um, and for, from a developer's point of view, it will be better because we can share code between the player part and the editor part, which was not possible with the Python version. This development has just begun, so there is currently no prototype available. Uh, this is a personal project. I work mostly alone on this in my spare time, so I will need help. Um, if you are willing to provide uh, uh, some help, uh, you can contact me and we will discuss how we can organize. Uh, this is the um, address of the main website, the official website for SOZI. Uh, thank you for your attention and maybe I have time for some questions.
Um, so I usually write my presentations in LaTeX. Is there a good way to, how would you do this, combining this with this? Would I sort of write my slides first in LaTeX and then turn them into importable figures that I can use this on? Or is there, is there something you've been thinking about? I'm not sure I heard everything you said. Uh, I was basically wondering, is there a way that you thought about how you would combine this system with a LaTeX based yes. because I use lots of equations and... Um, sure. it's, not, it's not something that I have thought about. Uh, there, there is a LaTeX extension for Inkscape. Yes. You can render all your code in Inkscape and then use it. Yeah. So you will use external other tools, yes, uh, or an, extent, an Inkscape extension for Inkscape or La LaTeX. Um, well, so it's um, one possibility. There are the basic philosophy of SOZ is to edit um, all your document, the complete document in uh, an SVG edi editor, or to get it generated for from another tool. Um, someone has made a port for the Dia diagram editor that can export to SVG. So the idea is that you must rely on existing tools that generate SVG. Another Hello? question? Yeah, over here. No, on your left. Thanks. Um, I'm not a SOSI user myself, but I, I do use Inkscape for my presentations. So I generate in PDF using some Python magic. And I'm a bit, you, surely you don't plan to re-implement all of Inkscape features in HTML. And I'm, I'm a bit lost because prob the f your final editor will probably be less powerful than Inkscape is. Okay. The idea is that this tool will just replace this one. I mean, the, I'm not planning to re-implement anything that uh, messes with the visual content of the document. The idea is to just provide a, f a presentation editor that will just manage the presentation data, not the content of the document itself. There has been an attempt for this. It is called uh, Awation. It is uh, not currently developed anymore. It was an attempt to make something more Prezi-like, uh, but using a web interface. So it allowed to create elements, create text elements, create uh, shapes. And it used the SOSI kernel in the background, but it's not currently uh, developed anymore, I, I think. Yes? Can we see the source code? Sorry? Can we see the source code of your presentation? The source code of this presentation? Yes. yes. You said it yes, is uh, in SOSI. So, so we are all developers here. Perhaps one or... I, I want to see the source code, if possible. Ah, oh, thank you. This is an SVG document played in Firefox, actually. Uh, so it, it is a, an Inkscape, Inkscape generated SVG with many uh, metadata added by Inkscape itself. Uh, in the end, we will find these elements. These are the, the frame elements that are added by SOSI with information, presentation information here. So the NS1 is actually the SOSI namespace uh, that is used, uh, that is added by Inkscape, and you will find maybe the, the script element, which is a minified version of the of the SOSI player JavaScript. Thank you. We have a last question. Um, um. It's about uh, using uh, SOSI specific uh, markup. Um, have you tried to uh, use uh, smile elements instead to uh, to annotate the the, the animation uh, declaratively? No, I have not. No. Okay. Um, all the animation part is managed uh, directly in JavaScript. Mm -hmm. uh, there were good. Uh, a good summary of why Smile was not uh, considered for this. It's on the in the issue tracker of the project. Well, I'm not sure I can find it easily now. But uh, someone argued that uh, we should use Smile, and another use, user explained what it was not a good idea. I don't remember exactly why. But it, in fact, when I started the development of this, uh, it was easier and uh, more. Uh, it 
well, animating in, in JavaScript uh, had better support, browser support, than Smile. So I sticked to this implementation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A last question, maybe someone? Hey, thanks. Um, if you're looking for extra developers and people working, how is your, let's say, called development community looking like? Do you have a, a um, um, issue tracker you discuss, but do you have, for example, I don't know, a Git repository that people yes. can download, etc.? Can you talk this about that? This project is uh, hosted at GitHub, uh, so you can already contribute uh, by forking, uh, submitting patches, providing translations, uh, um, submitting issues. Uh, there is currently no actual development team, so it's not easy to, to plan anything. Uh, so maybe we should get in touch later and try to find out a way to work together. Thank you for your presentation and good luck with the future of your software. Thank you.